Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video series we're going to be looking at work solutions to the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam that will be sat by students studying a BTEC Level 3 National in Engineering. Now the document that we're referring to in particular today are the sample assessment materials for the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam and this document is issue 2 that is or has previously been available on the Edexcel website. Question 9 reads, a dam retains water that is 10 metres deep and 5 metres wide, and we have a diagram of our scenario there. The first part of the question asks us to calculate the area of water against the dam wall. This is another question that we've already seen on issue 1 of the sample assessment materials, so it's another one that we need to make sure that we're competent in answering. The only difference here is that it's been split into two parts. And as I mentioned there, the first part is to calculate the area of the water against the dam wall. So what we're referring to is the area that's in contact with the dam here. Now we're told that the water is 10 metres deep and we're told that it's 5 metres wide. So if we imagine looking at this end on, like so, then what we would see is we would see the water at a depth of 10 metres and a width of 5 metres. And we have a sketch of it like so there. So this length here is 10 metres and the width is 5 metres. And if you can visualise, that area there is in contact with the fluid itself. Now this is a very straightforward area calculation because the area there is just the width times the height. So 10 times 5 is 50 metres squared. So what we have there is a very easy way to collect these two marks. If we move on to the next part of the question, next we're asked to calculate the hydrostatic thrust on the dam wall. Now when we refer to hydrostatic thrust, what we're actually referring to is the thrust force, and force is pressure times area. We've already calculated our area, what we need to determine is the required pressure here. So let's just have another look back at our diagram. What we know about hydrostatic pressure is that it increases at depth. So at the free surface here, the pressure is going to be zero. And at the bottom here, the pressure is going to be maximum. So we can refer to that as P max. But when we come to calculating the pressure that's applicable to this question, what we actually want to use is the average pressure. The pressure is going to increase linearly from zero to a maximum value. If we was to draw the pressure profile, it would appear something like that. So we want to use the average pressure or the pressure at a height of five meters, half the depth there. And we normally refer to that distance as X. So we need the pressure at a distance X or the pressure at five meters. We can then multiply that by our area to get our thrust force. So the pressure at a depth of five meters. So let's go back to our working area. We're given some information. We're given the density of the fluid or the density of the water as a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. So the pressure at a depth of five meters is rho g x. Normally we see that formula as rho g h, but we want the pressure at a depth of five meters. So if we write this as a complete equation, what we'll get is the force is the pressure times the area, or well, the pressure is rho g x, and we're going to multiply that by the area. So if we input our numbers, we've got 1000 times 9.81 times the distance, 5 metres. That's going to give us the average pressure. And we're times in that by the area that we previously calculated as 50. And that will give us a thrust force equal to 2,452,500 newtons. Now what I'm going to do is tidy up that answer by expressing it in mega newtons. And the way I get from newtons to mega newtons, moving the decimal back six places. Mega is 10 to the 6. And I'm going to express that answer as 
meganewtons to three decimal places.